Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at some additional tricks I've learned with the wedge tool. The wedge tool is invaluable for creating certain shapes, so let's get into it. So first, if you're not familiar with the wedge tool and you haven't watched the previous video, what the tool does is it's going to try to create a, a curved surface from whatever face you select to whatever edge you select. So you can get the wedge tool from Edit Mesh down into Wedge there. Or you can also get it through the shift right click menu. So I'll just give a quick demonstration of what it does. So what you do is you right click and you have to go into multi mode because you need to be able to select a face and an edge at the same time. So you go into multi mode, select the face that you want, and then hold down shift and also select the edge that you want. And once you're in there, you can go through the menu to get to the wedge tool or you can hold down shift plus the right mouse button to bring up this menu. And then you can select wedge face and boom, you get a wedge. And from there, you can adjust the divisions and create a curved surface with as many divisions as you want. And basically what you get from that is a super powerful tool that can create a curve from your current flat face down to the edge that you've selected. Now, the only problem with this is that often, especially if you were gonna make like a HVAC system or something for a building is that you don't want to wedge down to a single point. You actually want to wedge and then also have a wedge happening here. So you get a curve here and a curve here. Because if I just grab this guy now, whoops, and then just hold shift and just pull down to extrude, this isn't very realistic. We don't really have things like this in the real world that come down to a single point. Like maybe you do, but often there's a curve here and a curve here. So I'm just going to delete the faces here and just redo it. And I'll show you a trick. Let me just go here and just fill hole there. OK, cool. So we're back to our cube. So what you need now is you need to model a jig. And what I mean by jig is modeling another 3D object that I'm then going to trace around with my current 3D object, kind of like a template um, or a jig, because that's what it's called in real life. So I'm just going to show my jig here that I modeled previously. So my jig is just a cylinder. And it's got 16 sides, so it's got four segments per corner, basically. And so what you can do is you can actually use the edges off of the jig to extrude the wedge. And I'll show you that right now. So I'm just going to hold down D and hold down C and just middlemost drag to drag the pivot down to there. And I'm going to hold down V and snap it to there. And so now that I have this jig, I basically want to extrude the wedge there. And there was a kind of a more complex way in the previous video of doing it. And since then, um, some of the people actually on the YouTube channel have found a better way of doing it. So that was really cool. They watched the video and then they were playing around with the tool and then they realized that it can be done much more easily. So I'm going to show you guys that. So the new trick is select both objects, right, hold, click, and then select multi like we normally would do then select the face here and then select the edge of the second object here, and then also select the corresponding symmetrical edge on the other side. So I've got one face selected and two edges. And what this does is because these are exactly the same distance from the center of this thing, it's gonna basically put the pivot of the wedge here because the selection pivot is down there or whatever. So let's do the wedge, shift right click, select wedge tool, boom. And then let's go divisions to four. And I'm just going to set this to minus 90. And now we have a perfect wedge. So super fast. No need to do any weird extrusions like I showed in the previous video or delete any faces or regenerate any faces. You just select the three components and then you can wedge. And as you can see, it's airtight. It's like perfectly aligned. You get a perfect right angle. And then you can just go here and either delete this object or just hide it. And then you've got your extrusion. And then, you know, two seconds later, you can just come here, hold shift and drag it down. And then you've got your perfect corner. We could even just go back a couple steps by undoing. Let's undo the wedge here. Back to this. Whoops. Actually, let's just redo one. I don't need that. And then from here, we can press T to bring the history back up. And then we could increase the divisions. So you can do your wedge, get your perfect you know, quarter of a cylinder shape, and then you can choose however many segments that you want to use. So this can be super powerful for basically doing metrics for level design or extruding pipes or just a bunch of stuff like this is a really annoying shape to create in Maya. And the wedge tool is the best tool to do this with. 
Now you might be saying, oh, you know, like I could do that with extruding a spline or I could use the bridge tool. The bridge tool is like even faster, just two clicks and then go between it or whatever. And I'm going to show you why neither of those ideas work. Extrusions in Maya have always been a pain to do around corners. So let's check that out now. So my goal is to create this wedge with the four segments that turns exactly a right angle corner, spaces these out correctly, less spacing here, more spacing here, and then gives me a flat face here that I can then extrude off of again. So let's try that out with the extrude face along spline. So I'm just going to show my block from before. I'm going to hide my wedge that I made there, and I'm going to show my curve. So let's say you actually were able to model the perfect curve with exactly four segments and then go straight down there. Um, even that by itself is a pain because you would have to get the curve from somewhere. So you'd probably have to make a jig anyways to draw the curve. And then here's also the really annoying part. With this guy here, to extrude the face even remotely close, it needs to be perfectly in the center of the cube. So first I've got to go in here and like add some divisions and then, okay, now I can snap the pivot there and then I can drag snap it to the curve. So I've already had to do all that just to line it up because if you don't, the extrusion just goes all wacky and like turns a corner and stuff. Okay, cool. So we're ready to do our extrusion. So to do an extrusion along spline, you select the faces, then you select the curve and then you hold shift and right click and then we go extrude face. And cool, okay, things are looking promising. We add, what is it, four divisions? Four divisions, and you can already see the problem. Is it five divisions for this guy? Because it's got the other thing at the bottom. Sure, it's five divisions. So you can already see the problem. It's like quite obvious. Look at how janky this is. It doesn't follow the corner, even though I had that perfect spline. This part kind of follows the corner. This part follows a little bit better. And then watch how bad it gets when I add extra divisions. Look at this, it just starts overlapping on itself. This is all like super wonky. Look at what happens down here. It doesn't create that nice pinch here and the expansion up at the top. It just creates this hideous mess that you can't use for anything. And so extruding stuff along a spline in this situation anyways is entirely useless. Okay, and then let's look at the uh, bridge technique. Also, one of my other favorite tools, actually, bridging is awesome, but you will see it also has annoying problems. So here's the exact shape that I want to extrude from, traced it off of my other original shape that worked with the wedge. So go into edge mode, select the edges you want to wedge, sorry, uh, the edges that you want to uh, bridge, and then go down to bridge. I'm going to go into the options box here and I'm going to turn on smooth plus path plus curve and whatever everything else is default. I put four segments in there. Okay, and Bridget. And a different problem. This is better than the extrusion, but now it also pinches back onto itself and is also totally useless. And then that just gets worse as you add the segments. You get this wonky pinch there as well. So that also doesn't work. It might be fast to get into the bridge tool, but it's totally useless because you can't get a clean mesh out the other end. And what is cool about the bridge tool, because I use the curved surface, if you look inside the mesh, you'll see there's actually like a curve inside of it. And if you select that curve, you can grab those control points and you can actually tweak the uh, shape of the um, bridge in real time. But again, that doesn't help us. Like, why would you want to come in here and fiddle with this every time you just want to extrude a corner? And I don't even think you can't get it perfect anyways. Even if you fiddle with it, you can get it kind of close, but it's still not going to be parametric and it's not going to be clean and it's going to be totally useless. The other super cool thing about the wedge tool is the surfaces don't even need to be lined up. They just have to be lined up along like the plane from the side view but they don't even have to be the same shape or even the same distance apart. So that can also be super handy. You would only need to snap it up in the side view to get it to go to the right spot. So select those guys again, right click, go into multi, select a face, select the edges, and then shift right click and wedge. And then I don't know why I need to do minus 90. 
but you can see that's already working and we put in four segments and then it's perfect. Like it doesn't even need to be on the same plane or anything, but if you look in the side view, it's like perfectly lined up. And again, crank the divisions to as many as you want and it's never gonna do some weird crap down here and pinch out and go all wonky. All right, so now that we've checked out why the wedge tool rules, we will also look into the new trick that I learned that was kind of like an aha moment where I was like, oh man, I can't believe I was modeling that stuff by hand every time when there was a tool to do it. So when I'm modeling, a lot of the time, I need to be making like a planter or something or a curb or whatever. I worked on a lot of city games and uh, you're, you're always modeling like flower boxes and whatever, skate ledges and stuff like that. And so you want to be able to, you know, extrude a box. But if you're just kind of to eyeball it or whatever, like this, you're going to get like different widths, right? Like, oh, that one's skinnier than that one. Oh, there's, is there a way like I can just get like a nice 45 degree extrusion? And so my wife taught me this trick. I've been using this for many years. If you go into the top view and then you shift right click, enter the multi cut tool, go into the options box and set the snap to 45 instead of 10 and then just hold down shift and drag, you can do a cut like that, and you can do a cut like this. And what that helps you out with is if you delete, whoops, delete the faces here, and delete the faces here, you can grab the edges here, and grab the edges here, and then hold shift and extrude those out. And then see, you've got a nice, perfect 45 degree angle so the width between here and here and the width between here and here stays exactly the same. And then you can do the same thing there. You put a cut there, put a cut there, and then you could even just bridge across it. Now, the problem comes, though, is that that works fine when you're on a perfect right angle because you can go into the top down and cut along 45. But let's say you're at like some arbitrary angle like this, like just a little bit off, which is bound to happen if you're working on any type of like level or world or anything you're going to not be access aligned for some part of the level and then you're going to be screwed because you're not going to be able to do a 45 cut and so what i've been doing which is kind of lame is i've just been like eyeballing it sure that looks like pretty close and maybe that looks like pretty close and then go into here whoops go into face mode face mode face mode and then see, I can't even drag straight out because now I get this janky corner. This is maybe a different width. Well, it is a different width because I eyeballed it. So we could do, you know, like, let's say, go here and select that and select that and then snap the pivot onto the face. There we go. Jeez. Um, and then I've got the right angle or whatever and then go out from there. That should probably give it to me. But again, the width of this and the width of this is going to be inconsistent. And I was looking for a way to just perfectly get those type of extrusions at any arbitrary angle, like whatever. Maybe I want to rotate it as I'm working on it and then re-extrude it. And that's when I randomly realized that I could have just been using the wedge tool the whole time to do this, because I'm usually using the wedge to create those nice curved surfaces. The wedge tool by default is just set to one segment. So again, right click, multi-mode face and edge and wedge what do we got here 91 yeah okay wedge and then you get a perfect edge to extrude off of and then just grab the face and extrude from there extrude straight out right so i'm going to extrude from what that face there yep and then just go boom and then you have the perfect width ratio because that's a perfect 45. So even this is on some wonky angle and I have the transform frozen, at any time I can come to the edge and wedge it and get my perfect 45 degree angle wedge. So that was super cool. I can't believe that it took me so long to figure it out. So same thing with this guy. We want to wedge down to here and wedge face and boom, there you go. So go from there, select that face, and then hold D on the keyboard and select like that top face or whatever. So it lines it up with uh, the edge or select this guy. So it lines it up with that edge. 
and then just hold shift and extrude it out. And there we go. Snap those guys up and then we could actually, whoops, I extruded there twice. We could actually just bridge between them at points. So we could go here again and we could do another wedge. And then to get this face to be flat or whatever, there's a couple things that you can actually do. So you've got a couple kind of tricks here that we can do. First, we can make it perfectly flat, like planarize this with a built-in tool by default, or we can wedge it back out to 45 so we can continue on with our modeling to, to wrap it right around into a flower bed or whatever. So the wedge stuff is the same. Go to multi, whoops, go to face. Shift select edge, wedge it, and there you go, you're done. So then you can just extrude from there. Let me just undo that, okay, undo that. So if you wanted to flatten this and have it be perfectly planar, there's another cool trick that you can do. You can go into the move tool, whoops, sorry, not the move tool, into the scale tool. So press R to enter the scale tool, and uh, you can just double click this icon here. And then you can turn on prevent negative scale. This is super powerful. This is actually a feature from Max that they brought over into Maya. And I turn this on by default all the time. I never work with it off because it's super helpful. And so what that tool does is I'm just going to make a sphere here. It basically takes your selection, whatever your selection type is. And when you scale stuff, it doesn't let you go past flat. It zeroes out there. And this is super powerful because you can planarize stuff really easily that way and scale it down and you can just keep pulling and it won't go anymore. And then you have a perfectly flat plane. But what's really neat about this is that you can do it with things that are on an angle. So if you wanted to planarize this face, you don't, you no longer have to get some special script or anything like that. You can basically just grab the face and then planarizing it isn't going to work like that. See it kind of created like a wonky shape again there. So you don't want to scale along that axis. You want to scale along the actual planar axis. So how you do that is you just need to move the pivot of where it's going to prevent the negative scale. So first, I'm going to hold down D. I'm going to reset. And then I'm going to come over here. And when it highlights this edge and says align, I'm going to click there. So the, the green pivot is like right along that edge there. And then if you hold down D and V and just kind of middle mouse drag over there, we can leave that angle of the pivot there, but also snap it to the point. So now we have the, kind of this perfect pivot on the edge there like that. Enter the scale tool and then just scale it. So you can do super cool stuff like this, actually a scale along that perfect angle axis and flatten it out. And there you've planarized it. And that can be super handy for like a bunch of different crazy shapes. You can do all types of nice edits with that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Without viewers like you, this channel would not be possible. If you like this video, please purchase something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad free. See you next time. Have a fabulous day.